hello and welcome to engineers mindset so in this video we are going to be looking at the planar parking fraction and factor for body center cubic 110 plane so first of all let's pull out our formula the planar parking fraction the planar parking fraction ppf okay planar parking fraction is given mathematically as the area of atom all over area of plane all right we are asked the planar packing factor pp factor is given as number of atoms all over area of plane okay all right so before getting into it there are a few key things i want you to keep in mind concerning the relationship between the lattice constant and the radius of an atom for different cubic structure so for simple cubic structure for sc which is a simple cubic structure your lattice constant is equal to two times radius for body centered cubic structure which is bcc your lattice constant a is actually for r all over root 3 and finally for the face center cubic structure fcc the lattice constant parameter is equal to 2 r root 2 okay so for this given question we are looking into the body center cubic structure so we are going to be making use of this particular lattice constant parameter relationship with the radius so a is equal to 4 arrow all over root 3 just keep this in mind now our first task is to draw this plane so we'll be giving the miller index miller index was given simply our miller index or indices okay was given simply as one one zero so we need to find the intercept on the plane so our intercepts are okay the intercepts are First, you have your x-intercept, your y-intercept, and your z-intercept. So for the x-intercept, you have 1 all over 1. In this case now, this is our h for the Miller index. This is our k Miller index, and this is our l Miller index. So we find the intercept, which is the reciprocal of each of those terms. So for the x-intercept, is simply 1 all over h, and h is equal to 1. So you have this to be 1 all over 1. So the x-intercept is what? one so which means this plane is intercepting x at one for the y plane y is simply one all over k so you have one over k and k is also given here as one so it becomes one all over one which is t what one so which means this plane intercept the y axis at one finally for z z is simply one all over l and l over here is zero so that means the intercept becomes 1 all over 0 and 1 over 0 is infinity so which means this plane calls the z axis as infinity so our intercept your x y and z intercept simply becomes 1 1 infinity 1 1 infinity so now let's draw the plane or let's draw the intercept you start by plotting your simple cubic structure okay this is your simple cubic structure you have your simple cubic structure all right now not forgetting let's call here y so you can choose any direction it doesn't really matter but i call there y let's call here x and let's call here z so this is a simple unit cell so for simple unit cell it simply means that their distances apart are what one so this is one this is one and this is one for a simple cubic structure okay so x intercept is one so from the origin it cuts x as one at one so from origin trace it down to one this is where it cuts x at one similarly the y intercept is also at one for the from the origin you also trace out one to the y intercept cut it now you observe that at point z it cuts it at infinity that simply means that since z doesn't have a value first of all you join x and y together joining these two planes together now this means that this plane is parallel to the z plane since it cuts it at infinity it means that this plane is parallel to the z plane 
So what you do is, at each point that you've drawn so far, hold this and draw parallel line to the Z plane. This is the Z plane. So from this point, draw parallel line to the Z plane. Also from this point, draw parallel line to the Z plane. You form something like this. Then you would join these two points together. So this becomes my 1, 1 infinity plane or 1, 1, 0 plane. Okay, now we have, we are told that this is actually a body center cubic structure. Not forgetting that for a simple cubic cell, we are supposed to have corner atoms at each of the edges. Okay, but since we won't be making use of all the corner atoms, we simply put the corner atoms on the edges that we are going to need, which is the point or the planes that we've cut out so far. Here, this point and this point. So we'll put our corner atoms there. These planes that we've cut out so far is where you put your corner atoms. It doesn't mean that if you put your corner atoms here, you're wrong. We are just avoiding that simply because we will not be needing it for the calculation. So you simply put your corner atoms on the plane that we've cut out so far. Now, for the body center cubic, it is called a body center cubic structure because at the center of the cubic system, we have a body atom. So at the center of this cubic system, we have an atom situated here. So this is our plane. Now you pull out your plane. The plane is rectangular in shape. You pull it out you have this the plane is rectangular in shape so you have this not forgetting these are your corner atoms 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 not forgetting that now at the center we have an atom so at the center we have an atom this is what makes it a body centered cubic structure okay so at the center we have an atom okay so if you take a look at the formulas we said for the planar packing factor number of atoms all over area of atoms so in all we need to find the number of atoms that make up this given structure to find the number of atoms this is what you do in a very simple way atoms are spherical in shape which means the entire angle occupied by an atom is 360 degrees but if you take a look at this corner atom, it is not the entire sphere that is at each corner. Rather, just this point shaded and just this point shaded are actually what being occupied by this corner. Just the shaded region are occupied by that corner. For that reason, we need to find what is the angle of the shaded region. Observe that the length and the width of this rectangle are making an angle of 90 degrees. That means the angle of the shaded region is actually 90 degrees. So 90 degrees are actually being occupied out of the 360 degrees. So which means to obtain the volume or the area of atom at each of these corners, it becomes 90 degrees divided by 360 degrees. And this simply gives us 1 all over 4. So it means that each of these corner atoms are actually providing 1 all over 4 of their area, 1 all over 4 of their area, 1 all over 4 and 1 all over 4 of their area. So each of the corner atoms are providing 1 fourth of their area. Whereas the central atom is providing its entire area into the given system. So we simply find the total number of atoms that are made up in this given structure. Okay. So the number of atoms. The number of atoms is simply equal to the number of corner atoms and we have one, two, three, four corner atoms contributing one over four of their area. So that becomes four contributing one all over four. So it becomes four times one all over four. Plus the atom at the center is contributing its entire area. So we have plus one atom at the center. So this simply means number of atoms becomes four times one over four is one plus one. That simply gives us what two. So for a body center cubic plane, one, one, zero, the number of atoms is equal to 2. You keep this in mind. Next is to find the area of the plane. This plane is rectangular in shape. Not forgetting, distance between two corner atoms is taken as the lattice parameter, which is A. Distance between two corner atoms is simply taken as the lattice parameter, and that is equal to what A, or lattice constant. So if this is A, what then is this longest arm of the rectangle? So you observe that if you take a look at this diagram, like I said, distance between two corner atoms is taken as what? Lattice constant A. Distance between two corner atoms is also taken as lattice constant A. So you consider this right angle triangle. That helps you to find the length of the longest arm of this rectangle. 
so let's call here a b and c let's put a that angle triangle and we have this okay so this is a this is b and this is c remember distance between two corner atoms so from a from c to b is a from c to a is also a so we have here to be a we have here to be a so we are looking for the longest arm a to b okay to do this we employ our pythagoras theorem a b squared okay is equal to the sum of the square of the two adjacent sides that becomes a squared plus a squared which means a b squared is equal to 2a squared and as such if you make a be subject of the formula that becomes the square root of 2a all squared so a b is equal to the square root of a squared is simply a so it becomes a root 2 so the longest arm is actually a root 2 okay so if we know this longest arm now which is a root 2 which means we can find the area of this plane so from the formula area of atom divides area of plane so we can find the area of the plane since the plane is rectangular then the area becomes length times breadth not forgetting the length is the longest arm of the rectangle which is a root 2 that we just found now the breadth is this other side which is what simply a so this means area of plane okay is going to be equal to length times breadth and the length is a root 2 multiplied by the breadth is simply a so multiply by a this is actually a squared root 2. now we said that for a body centered cubic structure a is simply given as 4 arrow all over root 3 so you put that down where a is 4 arrow all over root 3 so in place of a squared we are going to be putting this so that means the area of the plane so let's use ap for area of plane becomes equal to so we said a squared root 2 in place of a squared you have 4 arrow over root 3 all squared multiplied by root 2 so this is equal to now 4 squared is 16 arrow squared of course remains arrow squared all over the square of root 3 simply gives us 3 not forgetting multiply by root 2 so multiply by root 2 all right so the area of the plane is now going to be equal to let's find 16 times root 2 divided by 3 so that gives us approximately 7.54 r squared okay so i just simply did 16 times root 2 divided by 3 and we have 7.54 r squared so this is the area of the plane now having found the area of the plane you simply plug into the formula planar parking fraction is equal to area of atom all over area of plane what then is the area of atom atoms are generally spherical in shape so the area of an atom is simply the area of a sphere therefore area of atom area of atom is simply equal to pi r square this is the area of a sphere so we can compute all of this into the formula and find our planar packing fraction and planar packing factor so let's do that over here and see So let's start with the first planar packing fraction pp fraction this is equal to the area of atom is pi r squared but since for the body center cubic structure in this case the total number of atoms obtained since we obtain total number of two atoms therefore you have to multiply this by two that simply means we have two total number of area so the area of these two atoms are pi r squared times two okay divide by area of the plane the area of the plane itself area of the plane gave, gave us 7.54 r squared so divide by 7.54 r squared so you observe that r squared cancels r squared so i have two times pi therefore planar packing fraction 
planar parking fraction is equal to 2 times pi this is 2 times pi is 3.142 divide 7.54 this is going to be equal to 2 multiplies 3.142 that gives us 6.284 divided by 7.54 so this simply implies that the planar parking fraction is equal to let's obtain 6.284 divided 7.54 so we have it to be 0.83 so this is the planar parking fraction for the body center cubic 110 plane okay now having found this next is to find the planar parking factor so planar parking factor is very simple number of atoms divided by the area of the plane so since we know the number of atoms and we know the area of the plane we can compute that so let's do that over here all right so planar parking factor pp factor is equal to so we said number of atoms and the number of atoms you obtain is 2 so you have 2 divided by the area of the plane area of the plane gave us 7.54 r squared so you have 7.54 r squared so this is equal to let's obtain 2 divided 7.54 so that gives us 0 0.255 all over r squared okay so this implies that planar parking factor is equal to 0 0.255 over r squared the unit is simply atoms per meter squared atoms per squared meter all right guys so that's how you find the planar parking fraction and planar parking factor for body center cubic 110 plane. In the next video, we are going to be talking about the planar parking fraction and planar parking factor for the body center cubic 111 plane and other planes also. I'm sure you want to be a part of that video. Do well to like this video, comment nicely, share to your friends, and if you are new to the channel, do well to also subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Thanks.